Robotics is an awesome way to learn programming because you get to see your efforts in real world action, and that's fun. Before we get started with the programming, let's get familiar with the robot. Pick up the controller and do what I do. The left joystick controls the waist and the shoulder pivots. Try it. Move it left right to rotate the waist and move it forward and backwards to move the shoulder joint. Go slow. This robot can do some damage. This joystick controls the elbow and the wrist. Forward backwards the elbow, left right is the wrist rotation. Try it, but again, be careful. We're going to use this example to satisfy requirement 5A, where as a minimum, you can simply modify an existing program. Our goal, we're going to add a routine that somebody else wrote to control the wrist, and we'll modify that wrist routine to limit the rotation of the wrist. We'll be using a C programming language called EasyC. It's the regular C programming language, but it takes care of all that nasty syntax for you and it uses a simple drag and drop user interface that gets you up and running quickly. Click on this tab right here and you'll see the main program. This is called a while loop. This loop runs over and over and over again as long as the stuff in parentheses never turns to zero. Well, we have a one there, so this is going to run forever until you turn the power off on the robot. What's it going to do over and over and over again? It's going to run the routine that controls the waist, a routine that controls the shoulder, another routine that controls the elbow, and another routine that controls the claw. These were all written for us by somebody else. But something's missing, isn't it? There's no wrist routine, is there? Let's download this program to the robot and make sure that there is no wrist action. To do that, hit Build and Download, Build and Download. Go ahead and do that. EasyC takes all of this stuff that we did here and converts it into code that the robot can understand. It says right here that that was successful. Do we want to download it to the robot? Sure. That gives us a dialog that looks like this. And you can see the program being downloaded to the robot. That program is going from the computer through this orange cable to the joystick. The joystick is then transmitting the code wirelessly down to the processor. That file was successfully downloaded. So now, if you pick up the joystick and move that right joystick left and right, nothing happens. The wrist doesn't move, does it? exactly what we expected. So let's add that wrist routine in. Kill this dialog, and all you have to do is come over here to this list of user functions, grab the wrist routine, and drag it onto this line right here. Let's go ahead and put it between the elbow and the claw, because that makes sense. Drop it in, say OK, and boom, we just added the wrist routine to our robot. Go ahead and build and download, build and download. It'll compile the project again. That was successful. Do we want to download it? Yes, we do. You should see this dialog pop up. And the code starts downloading to the robot. While it's downloading, these green check marks tell me that EasyC has checked to make sure that the correct firmware is in both the robot and the joystick. It's also telling me that the battery voltages are good in the robot and the joystick. We're not using the backup battery, so it's zero right now. OK, that was successful. So we say OK. OK, now pick up the joystick and move that right joystick left and right. Does your wrist work? Awesome. So we just added the wrist routine to the robot. But there's still a problem, isn't there? The wrist moves too far to the left and too far to the right. Well, let's go take a look at that routine. Kill this dialog. Double click on the wrist routine right here. This is the routine that controls the wrist. This line says read joystick number one, channel one, and put the answer in this memory location. Look on the joystick. Channel 1 is this joystick moving left and right, which we know is the wrist, right? Perfect. Suppose we wanted this other joystick left right to control the wrist. Well, we would simply tell it to read channel 4. Easy. Now, where did this come from? Well, over here on the left, we just grabbed this joystick function and dropped it on this line over here. This line says read the potentiometer that's plugged into slot 4. That's this red thing right here on the robot, and here's slot 4 on the processor. Most people call a potentiometer a pot, just because it's easier to say. The pot changes its value as the claw rotates. This utility lets me see what the pot's doing. If I manually move the wrist, you can see this value right here change. So in the center, the wrist is about 400. If I rotate it all the way this way, the wrist goes up over 1,000. And I rotate the wrist back this way, and the pot goes to zero. I can tell exactly where the wrist is. It's somewhere between 0, which is rotated all the way one way, and 1,000, which is rotated all the way the other way, which means the center would be around 0, 0,500 or so, right? Now skip this stuff for a second. 
And down here, you can see we simply take the joystick value that we read from the joystick up here, and we use that to set the speed of motor number six, which is our wrist motor. Now the only problem with that is since the joystick is setting the speed of the motor, that motor could keep rotating forever, which would twist up all the wires and eventually rip them right out of the robot. That'd be a bad thing. So we have to limit how far the motor can turn. And that's what all this stuff is up here. To do that, we just read the potentiometer, and when it reaches a certain value, we tell the motor to stop. So this if statement says if the potentiometer is getting close to zero and the joystick is negative, that is, it's trying to tell the motor to go in that direction, we set the joystick to zero. That tells the motor to stop. On the other end, we say else, if the potentiometer is getting really, really big, it's getting close to that 1,000 we saw, and the joystick is positive, it's telling the motor to go in the positive direction, then we set the joystick to zero. So now down here, the motor will be set to zero if the claw tries to go too far one way or the other. So in this example, the wrist turns almost all the way one way and almost all the way the other way. Let's limit it so that the wrist can't go quite so far. Let's limit it to right around the middle. So I'm going to change this one from 100 to something just under 500. How about, uh, how about 300? And then this one, let's limit him the other way. So let's take that 900 down to 700. So in theory, we just limited how far that wrist can turn. Try it. You can do build and download and build and download, or better yet, just hit F7, it's quicker. It was successfully built. Let's download that to our robot. Here's that dialog. And it was successfully downloaded to the robot. Pick up the joystick and see if the wrist rotation doesn't turn as far as before. Move the wrist slowly so that the wrist doesn't overshoot our set point. And sure enough, we've limited how far our wrist can turn. Perfect. Suppose we want the wrist to rotate slower than it does. Well, that's easy. Since the joystick value that we read back here controls the speed of motor six, we just double click on this and we divide that by whatever factor we want. Let's try and slow it down by a factor of three. Hit F7 to compile the project. It's successful. We do want to download it to the robot. Here's our download dialog, and we'll wait for that to finish. Okay, the download was successful. Pick up the joystick and see if the claw rotates slower now. And sure enough, it moves a lot slower. So that's all there is to it. We just took an existing program. Over in the main program, we added the wrist routine. Then we changed that wrist routine to limit the motion of the claw and slow the claw down. Now what if I wanted to change, oh, say, the waist routine? How do you think that works? Well, it rotates, right? And it rotates when you move the joystick. And its, it's motion is limited. It can't go all the way around. Well, gosh, that sounds a lot like what we just did, doesn't it? Well, let's go take a look at that waist routine. Get this picture in your head, double click on this, and look, it's the exact same routine, isn't it? We read the joystick, we read the potentiometer, we limit the motion of the waist based on the potentiometer value, and we send the potentiometer value out to the motor. In this case, it's motor one instead of motor six, and in this case, we're reading joystick channel four instead of channel one, but otherwise, it's the exact same code, isn't it? And that's how it usually goes with programming. Once you know one thing, you can apply it to lots of other things. Well, that's enough to give you a feel for robotics programming. And now that you have an idea of what it takes to program a robot, you should see if there's a robotics team at your school and go check it out. It's a lot of fun, and having robotics on your college resume opens a lot of doors. Some of the robotics competitions even offer college scholarships, so go check that out. We want to thank Vex Robotics for supporting this merit badge. You can learn more about Vex Robotics at VexRobotics.com and the Vex Robotics competitions at RobotEvents.com.